All right, we're live. Okay, well, welcome everyone to uh, the third meeting of the Montgomery County uh, District Facilities Plan, the local planning committee meeting. Uh, Chairman Preston, you may call the meeting to order. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And the next thing is everybody had a chance to look at the minutes. And if we, you have, I'll need somebody to make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Motion to approve the minutes. Can we get a second? I'll second. Motion, motion by, by Mr. Robertson. Robertson, second by Jenny Muse. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think the uh, I've been enrolling people uh, on my chart here as I see you logging on. So I think we have everyone but Mark Ledford, Kyle Miller, and Elizabeth Davis uh, at the meeting, and they may join us. So I will keep uh, keep abreast of who has logged on to the meeting. So. Uh, let me give you a little bit of a background of, of what has occurred and what's going to occur. Uh, on our first uh, LPC meeting, we had uh, the focus of our committee, what the purpose was, including background uh, of the law that affected what are we go going to do. We, we got specific data in our second meeting related to Montgomery County, including uh, future growth projections, and we also got financial data, including revenue sources uh, and updated bonding potential, uh, which was uh, quite positive, uh, considering that our bonding potential here at Montgomery County is almost double what it was just a couple of years ago. Tonight, we are going to hear about your current facilities, uh, their condition um, in their present form, their suitability, and what needs to be addressed. So. As Jeannie Cannon from RBS um, Architects uh, addresses uh, the committee tonight, keep in mind what other information that you might want to have presented to you that would help you make a decision. So we've, we've given the focus of the committee, uh, the specific growth projections for the county for the next several years, the financial outlook for the school district for the next several years, and now we're gonna be looking at the current state of your facilities here in Montgomery County and the architect's recommendation about how to address uh, some concerns maybe that, that uh, are with your current facility. So at this time, I'm gonna turn it over uh, to Jeannie Cannon. She's gonna be making her presentation. And at the end of her presentation, she's gonna be giving you a very detailed draft form, which is uh, one of the best that, that I have seen, uh, and, and not also Superintendent Thompson has seen also. Uh, we're not going to vote on that draft plan tonight. I want you to be able to take that at a home and, and, uh, and uh, look at it for the next uh, week and a half or so, and we're going to be coming back, I think, in about two weeks after you've had time to mull that over and review a lot of data on that. Um, and then we'll have a discussion probably in a couple of weeks. We'll get that nailed down tonight before we leave. So at this point in time, Jeannie, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a lot of uh, information to cover tonight. And I'll have to tell you, this is my very first one to do it all virtual. So um, it's lengthy. If you all need to pause, uh, interrupt me to add something to the list. I'll try to give time to do that. So uh, just please speak up. This is not a lecture for me. It's really a group participation. Each one of you all are on here because of your role in the district. Um, whether that's an administrator, parent, or community leader, there's various reasons you all are in the building and I'm the outsider coming in looking from the outside. So as an architect, we look at the buildings for two different reasons. We look at the actual physical condition of the building. You know, how are the roofs, the walls, the floors, you know, all those kind of things. But we also look at the spatial needs of the building. Is there enough room 
for all the classrooms, resource rooms, and everything else in the building. So we've kind of done an evaluation. I uh, have a PowerPoint that I'm going to put up here and share it on the screen. I'd rather you all look at that information instead of me. So uh, if you'll just bear with me here for just a couple of minutes while I um, get that um, screen up. Hopefully, you all can see that. Let me know if you can't. Um, we'll start the slideshow. Going through here, um, I want you all to be aware that we evaluate, this is the way KDE sees the buildings. <clears throat> and we're comparing your existing buildings to a brand new structure and comparing the needs to a brand new structure. So. There's a one through five scale that is loosely used. Uh, one being a brand new building like the Northview is not very old. And then other buildings, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years old, uh, you're seeing the conditions here, how they rate. Now we may give an element a five uh, for poor condition. For instance, if you need a sprinkler in the building and you don't have it, that rates as a five because it's a non-existing condition. So we use this scale as a rough estimate of how we rate the building. There is also a 75% rule that is involved in calculating the occupancy and the capacity of each one of your buildings. Um, Let's take high school rooms. New high school rooms should be 750 square feet per classroom. Some of your all's high school rooms in that very old part are much smaller, and so we cannot fit 25 occupants in there. Obviously, you can see on the chart that it's prorated uh, per the square footage of those rooms. So this has been used as a factor to calculate your capacity of each building. And finally, the uh, way we are doing these uh, evaluations has to do with how old each section of the building. So um, your buildings have been built at different times. There's been various additions added onto those buildings. If it's over 30 years old, all the systems qualify for an upgrade. But not everything is 30 years old. But if there are some items that are 15 years old, like the HVAC, the roofing, anything related to security, with security being such a hot item these days with the Safe School Acts, all of that falls within the, uh, the needs list, even if it's uh, 15 years or not 15 years old. So that's another criteria for the evaluation. Now, can everybody see the screen fairly well right now? Can you all see the Camargo? Okay, good deal. Um, this is a floor plan of Camargo Elementary School. This is the upper level and there's a lower level. But I colored it in the areas indicating the additions. And um, the gym being the oldest piece of this in the upper left corner, okay? That is a 1937 addition. The old school obviously was torn down and the new 1989 piece was built in its place. And you can see there's been several other additions since that time. And so we look at each component and how old since 1989, that's 31 years. So it qualifies for all the 30 year items that can be renovated or replaced in this building. So I've kind of made a needs list for each section of the building. And that's the way um, KDE has us review this, okay? And we compare that to the new building. Now, at the time of my visit, we had 554 students in the building and we calculated a capacity of 750. Now, it's my understanding you all went through a reorganization when Northview became an elementary school 
it allowed you all to spread out a little bit more. And so now all the elementary schools have adequate room in there for the students and all the accessory spaces that we need. So they're very, very nice buildings. You've got good capacity and we really didn't find anything deficient on that. So as we, here's the basement level of the plan here. And then when you look at the, this is the model program for KDE. So you start up there and you say, okay, I've got 30 classrooms being used for kindergarten, first grade, second grade, those things. And you can see the sizes that we've listed up there. Um, everything is within the 75% of the 800 square foot room that's required. And so everything qualifies for 25 kids. So you take that 25 students times the 30 rooms, and that's how you come up with the 750 capacity in the building. Nothing is in red when you looked at, yes, Please. Let me just let me just say real quick, if you look at our DFP from four years ago, you may see some differences in the capacity. And that is because those classrooms may be may being used differently now than they were four years ago. So this is the capacity based on how each classroom is currently being used. When you get to the high school, you'll see a big difference because KDE does not count like science labs. In fact, and Jeannie, correct me, they only count social studies classrooms, math classrooms, and English classrooms in the capacity number. Yes. So, so please don't think the capacity is truly how many kids can fit in the building. Um, it, it goes into a, a different kind of formula. So don't get concerned if you see the capacity number a little bit different on this DFP from the previous DFP. Correct. KDE has changed the way we look at all of these with this new um, KFIX system that they've had and we've had to put it on the computer and evaluate things quite a bit differently than we have done this in the past. So um, when you look at the middle column, you're seeing what is required of the space and then over to the right is what you actually have in your building. So there is nothing in red. EBD is a zero, but you don't happen to offer that program in this building. So that's not really a deficiency. Um, so everything looks really good there. As you can see, the media center at Car Camargo is 74%. I really didn't mark it up as a deficiency, even though it wasn't at 75, because we only are at 554 students with a capacity of 700. So it's just marginally deficient. And since we're not busting at the seams there, it probably is adequate for the space. So when we start looking at the needs, we look at the gym building, which is 83 years old. Actually, um, overall, there's that building. Um, it's been well taken care of. And so other than some mechanical and electrical items like water heater and plumbing, um, there are very few needs in that gym. Uh, there are a few good deck repairs that can maybe be done if a roofing project is done, but nothing that is um, significantly any damage. So that's in really good shape. When you get to the 1989, um, I'll start going through this list. Um, we look for things in the building that are ADA guidelines. We have to follow what Kentucky Building Code follows. And that includes um, any life safety issues and also American Disabilities Act is what the ADA is. And then also any energy code items. All of that is lumped into the Kentucky Building Code. So, yes, sir. You have a question? Um, when you see ADA, um, when I look at knobs on the building, those do not necessarily meet handicap with the levers or what required. So I can write those up as deficiency. I also want to say, when we get too into this, and you're going to see a lot of the same items per building. We are looking to make the Montgomery County need as big as we possibly can. These are legitimate items that would fall under the code or KDE deficiencies. And you may not go in there right away and replace all the doorknobs. You know, it may be 
fine like it is, you're maintaining just like it is, but if something were to be done, if a remodeling was to be done, this is one of the things you could choose to do. We are looking um, to increase your need as big as possible because that is how you all obtain your funding from the legislature through these restricted funds. And so the bigger need you have, the bigger piece of the pie you get. If you have a smaller need, then you don't get as much funding from the state. So we're trying to look for these things that would qualify um, for needs of the building. So the library furniture is 31 years old and most of it probably needs to be replaced. You can keep using it for as long as you wish, but we can certainly add that as a need to the building. A lot of the casework in the classrooms, the cubbies and the um, cabinets and things are just really aged and worn and probably could be updated. Again, we're comparing it to a brand new building. And then we look at um, kitchen hood equipment. There was some rusty deck down in the basement level. The shower in the FMD room does not comply with handicap accessibility. There is a shower in there, but it is not ADA compatible. So we can add that to the list. Plumbing fixtures, sanitary piping, water heater, and all lighting. So like site lighting, lighting in the building, if it has not been upgraded to LEDs, which is the most energy efficient light fixture out there now, we put that on the list as a need. Um, I know that your district is slowly one by one as they're replacing them. It's converting a lot of them to LED, but we also do the site lighting as well to save energy because that is a code compliant item now. And then when we go to the 97 edition, um, I've got the flooring in there. The day I happened to be there, the custodians were waxing up to their elbows and they were in wax and mess and mops and all this stuff. One of the things that the state is looking at now is not mandated to be absolutely insisted on, but in order because our maintenance staff has gotten smaller, because our custodians are, have gotten smaller, staff cuts and such, we're looking at things to ways to save money. And having the custodians wax all summer long does seem to be tedious. And so there's a non-wax product that we're installing. A VCT tile costs one dollar to install, but we're looking at the five to six dollar tiles because we don't have to wax them. So it's a higher upfront cost, but it's less maintenance. So your custodians have time in the summer to do other things. Now, I want to point out that right now, um, the Board of Education has a BG1 in the process right now of being approved, and they're doing quite a bit of repairs to Camargo. There's floor tile, ceiling tile, HVAC, and various assembly things that they're already doing in the building. Because, and they are actually going to replace several of the, the like the 1989, the floor tile. But in the 97 portion, since it's not 30 years old, the 05 and the 08 sections are not 30 years old, then um, Craig, my boss, is taking an alternate bid on some of those things to that bid uh, because the state hasn't approved us to do that work yet because the age of the building does not warrant replacement. So those are still in the work. So I'm gonna leave them on this list for now and put it in our plan in case it doesn't get done under the previous BG1 that's in place right now. So along with that goes um, some broken seals in the window. A lot of times you see that fog in the lights of the window and that's because the seals have been broken. The ceiling tile, when it looks like humidity and everything has cut the tiles, we usually look to replace those. The doors on this edition um, swing out in the corridor. I don't think the building was sprinkled at the time, but now it is. So we can have those doors swing in so that it's not um, swinging out into the egress path. We've got water heater on this, and then the 05 and 8 edition floor tile and ceiling tile as well. When you look at the overall building, we give this building a three, which is a very good condition. And um, on Camargo. Now I'm going to pause for just a minute to see if any of you all have comments and would like to add anything to this list 
of needs on this school. Does anybody have a comment? Okay, we will proceed on. Uh, again, please feel free to stop me. But this is how we're gonna kind of look at all the buildings. This is kind of a narrative of what those look like and how we'll go through this. So the next one is Mapleton. There were 448 students in the building that's pre-K through five and the capacity is 650. Again, with the reorganization and with Northview, then um, those, there are adequate spaces for, for the students in the building. And you can see the majority of the building was built in 92. A small cafeteria addition was put on in 04. And then at the end of the building, there were two additions in 07. Okay, so we're gonna move on. Again, there were no spatial needs. There are 26 classrooms in this building. There is no FMD or EBD or science in this room, but we do have rooms for those if we needed to. The kitchen is at 73%. Again, it's very close to 75. And since we're not full to capacity, I did not go on and put that on as a need because we probably have enough room as it is. So when we start looking at the needs per section, again, there are doorknobs everywhere and we need to put those um, as levers so that they're ABA compliant. Um, metal roof repairs, now this really doesn't warrant a roof replacement, but it does mean we've got several leaks in the building and we just need to have some repairs on that metal roof, which is a battle for every maintenance staff in the state. I did hey, find this. Yes. I, we, we do have FMD at Mapleton. Oh, I do, because I've got a stove in there. You're right. I need to add that back in, okay? FMD at Mapleton. I missed that. Because I do have it on here that there was a stove in that space. So I'm sorry, I did miss that. All the, anytime there's a stove in a building, um, it's to have a hood, at least something like what we have in our house that vents to the outside. And we put these a lot in like uh, break rooms and FMD rooms so the kids can practice on. But a, a hood is needed at some point or another. If nobody's written me up, I just let it go, but I did point it out and noticed it as I went through. So again, uh, the same windows here have several seal failures in this building, a lot of fog and moisture in between those glasses. The ceiling tile, um, we're at 28 years old on the 1992. So at the 30 year mark, which is within our four year plan, I'd like to see the ceiling tiles put on there. And that would probably be done in conjunction with an HVAC project at that time. So when you look at the MEP needs, that's mechanical electrical plumbing. We've got domestic water piping and sanitary piping repairs needed. We need to replace the boiler, the pumps, the cooling tower. The, it's basically the whole HVAC system and the controls need to be replaced throughout on this building. They're aged out. Um, the original light fixtures need to be replaced along with exit and egress light fixtures. Uh, the intercom system needs upgraded, the fire alarm needs replaced, and the generator and transfer switch. But overall, on a building like this size, uh, it still rates a three. There are very few needs in this building, and it's very, very nice. Does anybody have any comments on that besides the FMD that I need to put back on there? Good to go? Okay, I'm gonna keep proceeding unless y'all need to stop me. Mount Sterling Elementary. I have 493 students enrolled at my time of my visit with a capacity of 650. It's also pre-K through five. It was built all at one time, except for the addition down at the end, the six rooms in 07. Okay. So we look at that and um, there's 79,900 square feet in the building. We have 26 rooms. They're all over 800 square feet, which is perfect. Um, and there really are no uh, specific um, space requirements there. We also have really nice size rooms there, nothing's deficient. 
So when we talk about the needs of Mount Sterling, we again, we have a pretty short list. I will point out that right now there is a BG1 project started to replace the roof there on the lawn portion of the building. So that's already in the works right now. So it does not go on to this plan because it fell under the requirements of the plan currently in place right now. So that will be done this summer. So I took the roof off of this list. We did find a couple of crack repairs. It's just a little bit of settlement, nothing to worry about. We've got saggy ceilings in this. Again, the HVAC systems are getting um, aged out and there's no humidity control. At the time when that was built, we didn't put humidity control on HVA systems and now we do. So that's become the standard of comparison. We, uh, I noted on every single building to replace the VCT. It's in good condition. It's not broken or anything. It's just that it causes so much uh, waxing and maintenance re uh, requirements. Um, looking at the office arrangements, there are certain things required by KDE in a new building and the conference room is not uh, in this space or it's been taken over at the time or whatever, but we could rearrange some of those spaces or take some other space and provide a conference room in there for that building. Again, I've got the HVAC system on here. Makeup air units is what that is, uh, the MUA, the pumps, the controls. There are ceiling fans in every single room. Not sure why those got added somewhere along. I guess it was too hot and not, <laughs> not humidity controlled, so I guess those were added too. So um, probably need to replace all of that when the system is done. Water heaters, cooling towers. Um, again, the, the lighting on the interior of the building were upgraded to LED as well as the site lighting. Again, the fire alarm, the PA system, and then the, some of the HVAC system for the 07 part. Now, the 07 is only 13 years, but at 15 years, we can replace HVAC systems. So within this four-year plan, that's going to become... Um, a legitimate need that we can put on here with the cooling tower. So that's why that's been listed on here because we're trying to cover all the needs for the next four years. Mount Sterling, uh, we gave that a two rating. Okay. Any questions about Mount Sterling? I feel like I'm racing through this. I don't want to keep you all forever on this. Okay. We'll continue on to Northview. 2011, built all at one time, 566 students currently in the building with a capacity of 650. It's only nine years old. It's in excellent condition, very, very nice room for everything in there. It's so nice to be able to visit a district that has space like this and their buildings have been upgraded. It was a very nice uh, visit to be able to walk through your facilities. I put just a few things on there. Again, they don't qualify. We're not within the 15 years. We're certainly not within the 30 years, but we could do the VCT waxing. I did notice the day I was there, it was humid and the gym roof, the metal roof inside was popping every time the weather changed. And then the ox sensors in the room, when you walk in, they don't immediately come on. There was a delay. I had to walk like almost all the way into the room, fit clear to the middle of the room before the lights actually came on. So those are just something to note for the next time when we get there. But this is such a new building. We gave this one a one um, because of its age and just it's really nice condition. Anything on Northview that needs to be noted? Okay, we're gonna keep moving on. We get to McNabb. There are 1,077 students in the building currently, and I only calculated a capacity of 1,028, which means we're still a couple of rooms shy of having room for everybody. Now, at this facility, they're probably having uh, class periods, and some teachers are on um, break and have uh, planning periods, and so those rooms work out, or you're filling the rooms up really full. It's, you know, I know you all get by just fine, 
but again, we're looking for need. And so when you can calculate the capacity and it's small, that allows us to ask for those two extra rooms. Now, whether we ever actually build those two extra rooms may or may not happen, but we can certainly ask for those as a need. Okay, so there's the uh, main level of the building. You can see there's an 83 portion, the original, then the 85 portion in the back, and at the bottom is the connector that was added with the uh, front stairs there. And then the lower level, you can see the three additions as well on that. When we look at the needs of the building, there's 33 rooms. There, um, I'm sorry, this should be, <laughs> it should be 33 over here on my side, I messed up. But you can see how the calculations, I went, I've reiterated this um, prorating of the classrooms over to the side and you can see how we came up with that capacity at 1,028, which leaves us two rooms short. One of the science rooms was actually in a standard classroom or one of the standard classrooms was actually in a science room. So y'all are making it work just fine, but it is noted we could probably flip those and that wouldn't be in the red on the science. The cafeteria is the biggest need that I saw in this building. For 1,077 students, we should have a cafeteria that is 6,200 square feet. You can see it in the red. Your cafeteria, for whatever reason, was built at 3,900 square feet. So it's almost half of what it needs to be. And I'm sure you all feel it every day trying to feed those kids in that building. But um, there would be a way, I'm going to back up, if you can see um, right where the 1983 numbers are, that is your cafeteria. And if you went straight back and doubled that box right up to the top of the page, there would be room right there for a cafeteria uh, addition right in that area. Now, it would get into your mechanical room back there, but we can make that work really easy. We've already looked at that, did a little bit of study on it to see how that would work, and that would double your capacity in that, cafe in that cafeteria. So I definitely feel like this needs to be on the needs list for the next four years, whether that actually happens right away or not, but um, I know it's a concern of you all <laughs> having to feed those students in that small space. All right, so 1983, um, it's 37 years old. Um, I did note that six standard classrooms were being used for resource. A lot of the resource rooms at the end of each wing are being used for staff offices. And so that creates kind of the crowd as well in some of that. The cafeteria is 63%. The FMD is slightly small, but it's not below that 75 mark. Many of the windows here also have broken seals and have the fog in them. Um, there's some wainscot painting down in the basement where they put some incompatible paints over each other that can be repaired. The kitchen floor was put down. It's a concrete slab and it's got epoxy over it and it's all popping up. David said he has fought it and fought it trying to work with that, but it just never stuck in the beginning. And so I went on and put it to replace the entire floor in the kitchen. Again, you guys are making it work and it gets by just fine, but that, that's a big need we can put on here to be done sometime when a renovation is considered. Um, VCT flooring, I put that on there. Uh, there's a, another stove in this FMD room without a hood. We've got water piping, water heaters. The switch gear um, is getting outdated and is small with the additions that have been considered. So that needs to be looked at for an upgrade. And then the site lighting, of course, going to LED. In the 1985, of course, it's only two years newer and so it has a lot of the same thing the floors the windows um those kind of things so and in the 11 it's too new and it's also perfect it doesn't have really any problems with it i did note at one of the door outside doors water is coming in and david has since worked on that flashing at those that gym door and the other door where the water comes in so he's already taking care of some of that 
And so we get this school a rating of three. Of course, it was remodeled um, also throughout, and it's just a very, very nice facility. Your uh, district IT is housed in there as well and takes up some of that room by the gym. But um, I don't have any other needs unless you all know of something that we need to add to this list. All good? Well, I have a question. Um, we redid our uh, parent pickup line and where they loop around. And I was wondering about a covering out on that side of the building for when it rains and snows. Parent pickup? At for parent pickup. Parent pickup, yes. I can add a canopy on there for parent pickup. That's usually something they will allow us to put on the list. So I'll be glad to do that. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Uh-huh, I appreciate that. Anybody know of anything else? Okay, we'll add the parent canopy then. We'll move on to the high school. This was a challenge for me, never having been in the building. <laughs> and uh, I finally figured out where I was. It took a while, they even had to give me a map, but uh, we found our way around. And I wanted you to be able to see all the different additions there of course you all live there i know you all know it better by like the back of your hand but uh the orange part was the original 1965 building the standalone building but down at the bottom is the yellow which is also 1965 it was the old vote school or atc now so um I think the way that they entered it into the KFIX system is the orange part is the 1965 original, and they listed the 1965 ATC also as original building. And then the pink area is building two, and that was a standalone building at one time. We put 1970s on there. We're not sure if it's closer to 1975 but generally it's somewhere in that range when that building was built. Um, and then the green part, which is the uh, Sterling Alternative Building now, was built in 76. And then all the purple areas were added to connect all three buildings together. So you can see how that all happened. And then the arena was built on in 06 at the end. And out in the middle, you can kind of see a little outline of the greenhouses there um, that are out there in the yard as well. Um, ninth and 12th grade, we had 1,306 students. I have a capacity of 955. And I know that was a concern of Dr. Thompson's. Again, we went through at the day of my visit, we marked down what was being used for science, math, English, special ed, everything. And based on that calculation, I'll go on. To, there's the uh, upstairs and on the two buildings. And looking at the calculation, I had 32 classrooms. And you can see the sizes of them. In that old building, back when they built them in 1965, the classrooms were only about 650. And now they want them to be 750. So that's quite a bit of difference, trying to fit 25 kids in those in those rooms. So you can see the prorated box over to the right hand side there and how that is calculated. But you calculate your classrooms and then you add on all these other program spaces that are listed here. You add on your seven resource rooms, you add on your FMD, your science rooms are added on. And one of the science rooms are in a 635 square foot room and so that's a standard classroom. Um, it needs to be full size. The art room, you've got one big one and then you're using a classroom beside it and it doesn't qualify at the 1200 square feet either. So that those are two more rooms, classrooms, standard classrooms that are being used some for something other than math, English, and social studies. Um, the music vocal area is super nice. The band is very big, the computers are very big, the library is a little smaller than normal, but still a very generous size. 
This is probably the first school I've ever been in, and I do these all over the state of Kentucky where I found a school with three gymnasiums. So um, I, I think Joe Nance probably has a lot to do with that. He's a wonderful guy. He's been a bonding finance guy, and uh, you all have some luxury there that you get to enjoy that other people don't, and I'm just thrilled to see that you all have something for wrestling and something, you know, it, it, you just got all kinds of options there. Um, you can go on down through there, the tech ed space. Um, the state requires that to be $27.50, and I only found it to be $18.25. But generally, everything is a good size, except for, you know, a couple of very small spaces there. When you start looking at the needs of the original building, this is building one. Um, 25 of the classrooms in here are undersized, which reduces that capacity we talked about. We talked about the art room, the exterior and interior doors in this building are 55 years old. Some of the hardware has been replaced. There's still a lot of knobs. Um, and just the king in general is, is um, in, in need of repair. The gym floor in the barn, could be replaced. It's still the original floor. It's been sanded several times. It may have one sanding left in it, but it certainly qualifies for a replacement. And there's probably some bad spots in the floor. We've got VCT throughout. Again, it's the same flooring issue. You can live with it. It just requires a lot of maintenance. The ceiling tiles and grids throughout this section um, due to the HVAC conditions are also saggy and need replaced. On this roof, on this building, there's the low section between the barn and the auditorium, which have real high roofs, and all the roof area in between it is the low part, and that's the side of my hair where we need to replace the roof. I put asphalt paving and repairs on some of the roadways and parking lots on this building, replace the gym lights in the barn and throughout the building and some site lighting. We need to replace the water heaters, all the HVAC. And when we say add dedicated DOAS, that's dedicated outside air ventilation. Those are those new requirements that are required for fresh air exchanges, especially during COVID time right now would be very nice to have. The switch gear and the branch panels in this old, old, old building are original and need to be replaced. Again, We've got some new fire alarm devices and some old fire alarm devices. They're not all old, but we do need to upgrade the system as well as the power and the receptacles. The intercom speakers are in the same condition. And then we move to the ATC building. And you can see that, uh, whoops, the exterior windows, um, they're in need replaced. But the overhead doors in this building where all the big garage doors are have already been replaced. Um, I can't see what those other items are. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but um, we'll go on to this page. For like we've got old sinks and eye washes in the carpentry and auto shop on this one. The dust collector can be replaced. This is the one portion of the building that is not sprinkled. All the rest of the building is, but this old folks school is not. So we put to, to add fire protection to that building. Replace the panels, the lighting, the fire alarm, receptacles, and the speakers. And then we move over to building two. Again, we've got the one side room that's small. All the exterior doors are the original hall metals that uh, you can usually see daylight under them some of the time. Um, the toilets nearest the gym one, that's the small gym over there, those are the only set of bathrooms that are not ADA compliant. The door entries are too small and the fixtures itself do not meet ADA there. So that's kind of a gut job on that toilet over in that area. We've got doorknobs throughout this building too, but the floor tile, the stair treads, all the science rooms I feel like are needing to be upgraded. Uh, that's a tall order. You can get by just fine, but they are original casework, original plumbing. Everything's original in there, and that's 40 plus years old. So um, it probably needs to be replaced as well. Um, at the time this building was built, 
the building was not sprinkled. And so they put in those little pods, they put a lot of exterior doors in there for additional exits. Now that the building's sprinkled, those extra fire safety requirements are not needed. And with the onset of all this school security and trying to protect every door and everything, it would be wise to probably remove some of those exterior doors from building two because they're not needed anymore. And it creates a safety issue now. It's on building two, the boiler, piping, pumps, controls, all the HVAC. The water heater tanks, the switch gear, light fixtures, speakers, generator, that's your emergency power, all in that building. All those systems are kept together pretty well, but they are showing their age. <clears throat> then we move to the Starling Alt building. I think this building's probably in the poorest condition. And I probably had the biggest need on this building. You've got interior exterior doors, all the garage doors need to be in place, windows, flooring. There's a lot of paneling that's been put up. I'll, um, I'll speak to that for just a minute. You know, when we design these buildings, architects usually try to decide what the fire code requirements based on how many students are going to be in there. And we try to build everything with non-combustible materials like metal deck and steel joist. And when we come in and we add plywood and paneling, which are combustible materials, when we subdivide a little room or whatever, that makes it non-compliant with the code and makes it a fire hazard. So we just need to be aware of that. And anytime we do divide off a space, we probably need to use non-combustible materials like drywall and metal studs versus two by fours and plywood. So just something to think about. Um, I call it home ec, but the new term for it is family consumer science. And um, the next item talks about replacing all of that space for family consumer science. Um, the, the goal would be to convert it to a culinary arts program, which becomes more of a vocational setting versus just your high school home ec class. So that's a big ticket item there on that one. Um, for, for needs in the district as far as the cost of that item. Replace all the lockers. Um, the paint is peeling, of course, on the outside metal fascia and all the roof trim. That's just an aesthetic thing that can be put on this list because of its age. And also the toilets in this building do not meet ADA, the bank buildings, big, big buildings. And then we get to all the MEP items, all the HVAC and everything in this building needs to be replaced as well as the switch gear, lighting upgrades, fire alarm, PA, exit lighting, everything in receptacles in this building. So there are quite a few needs in the alt school uh, for this one. The greenhouse I went on and put on here because that's something we can add on here. Uh, we talked about the the brick structure that is still really in good condition, but the two greenhouse itself, the panels are pretty well shot. And so we've looked at just uh, replacing those structures and keeping the head house there, but reconfiguring it basically like it is and just put new greenhouse structures in there um, for that program that's offered. When we get to the 2003, of course, it's too new. It's very new, but they, we did have some roof leaks along that uh, cafeteria corridor area. The kitchen that was built in this is 77%. Um, it's a little concerning that it was built small, but the serving area seems to be the bigger concern for the kitchen ladies versus the actual kitchen itself. Being that it's in a curve, it just is really small to fit all the students through there in a short period of time. And we'd like to see that serving area expanded somehow. Probably can't go on the list because it's not 30 years old, but we can put it on a category five on the plan, um, which is needs to the building, but it's paid with general funds versus restricted funds. So I did go on and add that on there. The cafeteria size is adequate if you count the corridor that runs through there. But since that is a path of egress, 
I've tried to calculate it, not counting the quarter, and it does meet the 75%, but it does make it a little small, and it's open, and it's noisy, and all those kind of things I heard um, comments about. There is a plenal return system in this one piece of the building for the HVAC system, which makes it real noisy up there. Um, so we'd like to see that have a ducted return, something David asked for, that that's very valid. And then in the arena, very few um, needs in there. It's a very, very nice gym. There are a few leaks in the front windows, usually a flashing issue. And then the biggest request there was they need more storage for equipment. Let me see, I believe that's everything. So um, we gave the high school a rating of three. You have a lot of new parts, but you also have a lot of old parts, so it kind of averages out. I give most some of those old parts, especially the old school, a five, but um, it's um, still a very, very viable building. And I want to stop there and see, since we went over so many pieces and parts of that high school, does anybody else have anything to add to the high school? I know at some, I know at some point we had discussed a um, like an awning. I know Brandy had mentioned it for the middle school, but for our buses, it's a very small awning, and we have a lot of kids that stand out and wait for buses for weather. Uh, Where are the buses? Is that in the circle up front there? Where do um, the buses pick up? Not by the flagpole. That's where the parents pick up. So it's okay. the entrance by the main door. Okay. All right. And that's not a very big canopy at all, is it? So you no. want an extended canopy there for buses, is that right? Yeah. Okay. And I don't know if it was mentioned in the building one part, but I know that there are classrooms upstairs that leak, their windows leak pretty bad. Yes, yes. very, very, very bad. We've got, actually it's in the wall system itself. So David and I put it under the walls versus the roof, but it's where they covered up those old windows and all that is leaking really bad. Okay. All right, anything else? Yes, I've had a uh, community person inquire about a locker facility for the soccer field. Okay. I don't know if that is uh, something that needs to be discussed at this point, but just to put it in the, in the bucket uh, for a need. Okay, this, uh, what they knew, and I'll just tell you how this works. With KDE, when, we, when you all see the draft plan here a little bit, you'll see there are priority columns, okay? So all school building needs go in priority one or priority two. Anything like if you need another gym or cafeteria or auditorium, that would go in priority three. We don't have any of those. And then in priority four are your support buildings like central office, best garage, maintenance, those kind of things. And then they leave a priority five in there for anything athletic. So what they really do, they want all the restricted funds to be spent on priorities one through four. So that's where we put all these needs for restricted funds. And then in that priority five is where we put those athletic needs like soccer building and those kind of things. So we will get to that. I've got some of them on the plan that I'll show you. And if we need to add more, we'll get to that. But I want to revisit that here in just a few minutes when we get to the plan, okay? I appreciate you knowing that. I also wanted to ask, I had a question with Mapletons. Once people brought up awnings, I hadn't thought about that. Um, at our back bus loop, we don't have an awning at all. And okay. um, we also have preschool that are dropped off and picked up there as well, our preschool kids. Okay, so I'll add that. Can you our, at the bus? Yes, at the back bus loop. Okay. And then our other kids dismissed from the gym, and we have an awning, like from the office out to the sidewalk, but coming out from the gym, that awning, there's no awning to connect to the front sidewalk. Okay. Where For our kids camp. actually okay. come out. To. And that's at Mapleton also? At Mapleton, yes. Okay, great. I'll be sure and add that on there, Okay. Oh, we had a concern at the high school on our cafeteria, um, how it's just open to the main doors. So when like people <laughs> or visitors come in, it's just the cafeteria is right there. Um, and I know we've had a lot of discussions about safety issues with that. I 
And what we probably need to do, Dr. Thompson did call me uh, last week and we did talk about needing to add some security features to your front entrance and uh, whether that should be um, really adding on a little entry vestibule out there where the receptionist can sit, where you check in properly and then you're allowed in the building and possibly closing in the cafeteria. Um, I'd, I'd really like to hear your all's pleasure. You, you guys are kind of the leaders in that, so you need it. I'd love a discussion about how that should be handled and what do you all want to see on here? Or do we just say, provide some security entrance features and just put a chunk of money towards it so we can be flexible and we can decide a little later what to do there, so. Yeah, and just and that, to add on to Jenny there, so the conversation has gone a couple ways. So one is that where the current entrance is, um, we don't have that secure foyer vestibule area. So um, we know that one fix is to um, secure that second set of doors going in the front entrance, which would then require us to have a door into the office area. Um, so you could get into the office without having to get through the second set of vestibule doors. Um, so that's one option. If we were to keep the, the front door or the front entrance where it is, then what Jenny was saying is we might want to look at either a short wall um, or something around the cafeteria area that would um, kind of not have direct access from the front door. The other idea that's been floating out there um, that we've talked with the administration about is moving, you know, if you look at the high school, where the front entrance is right now is not an, um, it's not the natural point that draws your eyes. And so what would the possibility be of moving the front entrance up to the flagpole to the, where the, the barn entrance is? Um, and if we did that, then we would have to basically recreate a new safety foyer up there or else we would end up with the exact same issue that we have now, which is once you get in those doors, you have access to the, the stairs going to upstairs um, or straight down to the um, three separate hallways that can get into all other aspects of the, the building. So. We had talked with Jeannie about this a couple of weeks ago. Jeannie, correct me. I'm thinking we made some statement in um, section four um, that talked about um, increasing, looking at um, potential options for front entrance and security options with that. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, it's kind of hard until you really have a full architectural study on that, what to do with the safety school officer. Uh, blocking off that stair egress being right in the middle of the barn entrance up there is, creates a real egress issue, you know, in a fire. So that to me seems very, very, very expensive. Plus you have to create the lobby and all that where it seems a little more well, maybe a little easier to handle at this other one, even if we had to build on a little reception room outside there to, to where somebody can see in and out. It still seems to be a little simpler option at the existing front door right now. And just yeah, maybe so, wall off the cafeteria. Yeah, so so just to you know go a little bit more. Um, so you know the, the purpose of the DFP is to not only provide a roadmap for the district, but also to show our unmet need. So if there are some things, we certainly want to put them on here. Um, if we were to add the safety vestibule or and um, the board has already discussed moving forward, um, if we needed to go that way, we have school security funds that we can use to basically cover the cost using where the current entrance is, locking down those second set of doors and you know, basically cutting a new door into the office. So if we were to do that, then obviously having some type of potential um, in, interior wall around the cafeteria to section it off from the, the foyer area would be something that we need to consider on the DFP. If we look at moving the front entrance to the, the circle where the flagpoles are, um, 
we don't have enough school security funds to to create that. So that would have to be included in the DFP and would require bonding and, and those things. So um, if you don't mind, you know, feel free to, I'm going to shut up here. So feel free to kind of jump in with, with your all's thoughts um, on those ideas. I don't like the move in the front office idea. Um, I feel when I was in high school, I feel like that was the front office and then they moved it. So it seems silly to kind of move it back. But I know in a lot of schools they have, I, I really feel comfortable with the idea of someone like a visitor, you know, going straight into that front office or, you know, kind of like at Mount Sterling Elementary where you walk in and they buzz you in and you go in, you know, to the right um, and then they check you in there. I feel something simple like that would just be like a major improvement safety wise. As far as the way I look at view the plan, I see it as a need no matter what, whether it's funded or not, but there is a category on the plan, it's under two, category 2E, where we put all the life safety issues, and this definitely becomes a safety, security, life safety issue. So um, my recommendation, if we don't really have a set way to do it, is just throw some money at a safe school entrance, and I'm thinking about $250,000. Because we don't know what that would entail, we may have to build a little vestibule or a little reception area out there um, and make it connect to the current reception because right now she can't even see the door, you know. So um, that would be one way to handle it on the plan without having to make a decision exactly how we're going to do it right now, if that helps. Okay. <laughs> Thumbs up. All right. Um, let's move on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, NSC also has NSC also has a need for awning across the back in our bus loop or preschool and and everything. We have it's wide open back there, so that's a need much as the other elementary. What school was it? MSC. What's that? Mount Sterling Mount, Elementary. Mount Sterling Elementary. Mount Sterling, okay. <laughs> All right. at the uh, parent or bus? Uh, this is the bus loop in the back of the school. Okay, thank you. Appreciate you clarifying that. Okay, we'll put that on there. Let me move on. I do want to hit these. Um, Support buildings real quick. We, we go through these because they're on the plan too and it won't take too long, but I do want to make you aware of these buildings. The welding shop is used for students, so it is considered partial um, school building, although maintenance uh, uses part of the building as well. But you can see down the bottom of the page, it's 1963. Um, very um, basic building, functional building. Um, the classrooms were in 83, and then on the back side is a big classroom, 89. Um, we basically put that the siding and roof need to be replaced, refinished or replaced. Everything in here, it doesn't need ADA. There's no ADA toilets. There's no ADA uh, hardware. The welding booths are pretty well original and need to be upgraded. They're pretty old. Um, overhead doors, HVAC, lighting, fire alarm, everything. So just kind of a complete upgrade. Again, this goes in priority four, so it's not high um, on the priority list, but it certainly adds and can, can, well, can contribute to our needs of the district. So we put that on there, and this building is probably rated a four if we were comparing it to a brand new structure. It's still viable, it's very useful, um, I think it's a great program because we do need hands-on fellas, not just book smart people. Um, we need more, I see that more in our industry every day that we need um, technical, or, you know, hands-on people. And um, so I would like to see us add these things onto the list as well. 
And then we look at the central office building. This is a beautiful upgrade from where you came from. <laughs> very, very nice. And you all uh, get to use that for the community and those large meeting rooms. And the college gets to use it too. I think that's a great asset for your kids. They get dual credits. Um, very few needs. Of course, the building's 20 years old. Um, so I can't do a whole lot in there. Uh, they want to replace the flooring in some of those large meeting areas, but it does, technically doesn't meet the 30 year criteria. However, the HVAC does, it's over 15, so we can put that on there. And then you've got the maintenance shop on the right hand side, you're seeing the lower level and on the left hand side, you're seeing the mezzanine areas that are above up there. That's a 1990 building. Um, it needs a second toilet for our male, female, the door hardware and HVAC and lighting. And then I put a central storage is needed. You all have a central storage building. It's on a separate campus from here. But it just needs to be renovated um, completely for fireproof storage and for equipment for maintenance. So we put some monies on that as well. And then you've got the bus garage, which was built in 07. That's a very, very nice four bay building. It's got the extra bus wash on the end. No needs there. And then the original central office now being used for adult ed. It's 1965 and it needs everything. You know, it's got um, asbestos floor tile. And I do want to clarify when I say that, guys, that, you know, the A word is always a bad thing. But when it's not broken up and it's totally in place and glued down, it's perfectly safe for everybody. It's just that if ever you did a renovation to this building, you would have it taken up at that time. So it's not an unsafe condition at all. It's just that we know it in the building. David has to keep an asbestos management plan on hand of all the buildings that have some asbestos in it and uh, keep records of that. So doors, hardware, toilets, HVAC, lighting, and fire alarm, everything in this building. So generally that's the end of the slideshow and then I want to go I take that back I need to go show you one other screen <laughs> of the plan if I can let's see here um, right here uh, yes okay so um, We've kind of hit the needs and talked about those. I want to kind of walk you through this plan. Um, Dr. Thompson, are you going to be able to email this, this out to everybody? They have, they already have access to it in the link that I sent them this morning. Okay, perfect. Okay. Let me kind of talk about how this is because basically we've talked, taken everything that we've just talked about and we've put it in this KDE format that they require of a district plan. You all have seen the previous plan. You have that PowerPoint one and two. And so this is kind of what the new plan is gonna look like. It's similar, but it's a lot different the way that KDE is having us put this in. So you can see up here, we're gonna shoot for the board or state final approval in June this year. It'll be a four year plan to 2025. Our current organization, okay. yes. Can you stop sharing your screen for a minute and then turn it back on? We're not seeing the the DFT. Oh, okay, sure. Let me try it again. How about now? Yep, you're good now. Okay, good. So the current plan of organization, you have a preschool building, then you have K through five, six through eight, and nine through 12. And my assumption is that this committee is gonna to choose to keep that exactly the same. And again, as the architect, my job is to write up this draft plan just as a starting point. So anything you all want to alter, change, or make recommendations, that's your assignment as a part of this committee is to tell, direct me to make changes to this. But I, I get it started for you based on some of the information, the criteria we've talked about. So right now I'm assuming we're keeping the long range plan the same as it is now. 
And then we list these school centers right here. You've got the high school and the ATC building, even though they're all one building, they consider those separate uh, centers of school. And you can see um, their permanent buildings. All these structures right here are considered permanent. Um, if we were going to propose to close one of the buildings for some reason, you would make that transitional. So right now, I'm assuming we've got a high school, an ATC, a middle school, and four elementary schools that are going to be permanent centers. And then I'm, I'm only showing you this portion right here because that is priority one. My recommendation to you is to, unless you had something very urgent to take care of right away, I would not recommend putting any needs in priority one. And the reason for that is because of the way KDE handles priority ones. Let's say we were to put um, the secure entrance at Montgomery High School on priority one. We would not be able to do anything else on the entire list, not even replace a boiler if it broke or a roof if it leaked or anything until we met the needs in priority one. So if there was something urgent, you may wanna consider doing that, but by and far, we recommend to most local boards and LPCs that they leave this category empty. So if you all choose to review and put something up here, I've left these categories here so that we could, but it's not highly recommended to do that unless you have an urgent need. So then we go on down to priority two, and usually those are things that are spent in the Second biennium, this is a four-year plan, so there usually it becomes in the last two years of the plan, but it doesn't have to be. And if it's in priority two, I forget how many items I've got on here. There's probably like seven or eight items. You know, I've got the high school, middle school, and all the elementaries and everything we've talked about. The Board of Education can decide to take 2C number seven first if they want to do that instead of 2C1. So anything in priority two, you can take a piece of it, you can do the whole thing, you can do parts and piece of it, move it around, take the bottom one before the top one, any order whatsoever in two, you can do any of those. But if you're in one, you cannot do that. So right now I have everything we've discussed today and I will add these things that we've talked about that I've written down today that you all have mentioned to me. I will add those onto here, but I'm recommending that we put everything in priority 2C, which is major renovation of our existing facilities, okay? So we have the high school and we've listed the renovations here and you can see all these elements. These little numbering systems correspond to this new software program that they're having us put this in in this order. So there's the 1965 original, there's the 1965 ATC, the 75, which is the building two. You've got the alt school, the connector. We're showing that we need eight more rooms. One science room, one art room, and then the greenhouses to be replaced. And these would be new construction right here. Does everybody kind of understand how that's laid out? So let me let me jump in here real quick. So, do we need eight, do we need eight more classrooms um, right now? No. What this is saying is based on how we're using the classrooms currently, that get the capacity, and then based on the number of students there, this is how many more we could have. So it's. This is not saying we're gonna go build eight new classrooms on the high school. Again, this is to show the state kind of what our unmet need is so that we get a bigger slice of the pie. If I were to take that $2 million off, you can see it's 1995. If I were to take that off, that lessens your need. 
So he's totally right. You may never add eight rooms on it, but your need is showing that you need eight rooms. And so in order to keep that $2 million worth of need, I would recommend that we keep it on there. We certainly don't have to, guys, okay? I'm not trying to tell you we have to, but this is a good way to approach this and, um, and show that need to the building, okay? We go on down to McNabb, you can see the 83 building, the 85 building, nothing in the 2011. And then we're saying we need two rooms, four resource rooms and the cafeteria expansion. Camargo, we've listed everything in here except what they're doing on the BG1 right now is down through there. And then you've got Mapleton. I'll add the canopies that we've talked about here and at the other buildings, okay? We'll add that on to this need up here in the original part of those buildings. Mount Sterling will add the canopy. The welding shop, you can see the needs and the adult ed, okay? And then there is a category called 2D. This is your Kara strands. This is all anything related to whiteboard technology. So originally we were putting, putting smart boards in the rooms when this started, and then we changed to projectors. And then some people are going to interactive TV. So it really doesn't matter what kind of technology you need or what you use at your district. But what we're saying is within the next four years, 50 of those rooms that you have throughout the district are going to become obsolete and need to be replaced. And so your technology person has, they allow $6,500 per room on the plan for any kind of cats money. And so that, that includes this as a part of your needs. So if he needs to replace, he's, it's on the plan. So that's on everybody's plan. Every district has this, this item on their plan. And then here's the new category 2E that I was talking about, it's life safety. So you can see at the high school, we need upgrade on the fire alarm, exits, emergency, fire suppression, all of these kind of things are your life safety items. This is where I would add the item right in here that says secure entry, okay? And I think we need to probably add that onto here um, and I will show that after this meeting, I'll resend the revisions out to you, Dr. Thompson, and you can issue that out tomorrow. And they can see um, the secure entry would go under this portion right here, under life safety. And then Camargo, Mapleton, all of them had a few life safety items. And then 2F is your uh, handicap accessibility item. So anything that needed to be ADA compliant, your mostly doors and hardware and toilets go under this category right here. Okay, so then we get to category three and you can see it's um, kitchen cafeterias, admins, auditoriums and gyms. This is if you were gonna do a standalone and we need an expansion of a cafeteria at McNabb, but we're showing it up here under the priority two as opposed to under priority three because they're not standalone. And then we get to priority four, which is your central office and then your maintenance shop. Now, because these are not old enough, they may mark those up when we send them up there, but I'm gonna go on and put those on there. Um, and then you've got your maintenance shop and your central storage building here. So right down there, this line right here, district facility, we have $28 million worth of need on your plan for the next four years. Are you gonna be able to bond that? Probably not. You know, you've already had your bonding meeting, your bonding guy talked to you about that, but this shows that we have this much unmet need. And then what pieces and parts of that you'll be able to do with your bonding money will come off of this list for the next plan, okay? Then we get to priority five, and this is all those discretionary funds. So we've got the Ag Center on here. They wanna add an arena and a classroom. Here's where we have the soccer field, sir. We've put the uh, concession stand and public toilets on here. You, is that what you were talking about or does it need to be a locker building too? Uh, the need was for the students to be able to change clothes and privacy. 
Okay, so we need to probably add lockers to that, a uh, locker locker rooms, male and female, to this line item right here. Yes, they're yeah. having, as I understand it, they're having to go to their automobiles to change clothes or <laughs> walk over to the uh, uh, gymnasium to okay. change their clothes. Jeannie, well, that, so that, that came in from a community member um, who's associated with the, the soccer program. If you don't mind, let me check on that. I don't mind just putting it on there, but I do think that there are there are facilities available in the arena for them to use. It just is they got to walk up the stairs and it's not right next to the field. Okay. So, you so just let, let me, me know what you want to do about that. Yeah, Ron, I'm not trying to, um, to run over you on that. I just want to double check something before we put that on. Sure, I okay. have no problem with that. <laughs> And then we've got the district baseball and softball fields at the middle school that we've got on here. We've got the turf on the football field along with a rubber track and a new irrigation system at the high school. And then we've got these few extra things on Camargo, the high school and the adult ed here that don't qualify for, you know what? The, I put these in the wrong category right here. <laughs> Those right there are supposed to be under the 2F instead of right here, I think. I think I misplaced those, so I'll fix that too, okay? So anyway, that's, that's your plan. That's what it looks like. We want you all to kind of study that. Again, like I said, I'll try to make the corrections that we've talked about tonight, and then I'll issue that out tomorrow. And then um, they're gonna try to get an ad in the paper and run an ad in the paper. We have to advertise and have a forum um, when we vote for this. So um, that'll probably be in a couple of weeks and that'll give you guys time to study it. And if you have anything else to add at that meeting, we can certainly do it at that time. Okay. Jeannie, where are these bus canopies? Uh, <laughs> where do they fit in as far as the priority? Well, I, I'm going to try to put them under category two. They've let me do okay. that before. So I'm going to try to put it there. My suggestion is let's put it as part of the building. And then if, when we send it up there and they review it and tell us to move it, then we'll certainly move it. But I'd like to try to get it under the unmet need as opposed yeah, to category sure. five. Okay. Yeah. I understand. Thank you. Okay. I have a question. Anything Dr. else? Yes. Dr. Thompson, uh, I was looking at the uh, greenhouse, a million dollars for that greenhouse. Has any thought been given to contacting App Harvest up at Sharkey? and see if we could become a satellite or at least get some funding from that. And also I would suggest maybe going after some of the ag development funds out of Frankfurt to get that greenhouse built. Just a thought. We, we talked briefly about the app harvest at one of the board meetings about a month ago. Um, that's on our to-do list to reach out and see. I know they've got a nice relationship with, um, with Rowan County Schools. Um, so we, we are looking into that, Ron. Good deal. And Ron, the advantage of putting this on here and a price tag is that if some special money does become available, then we won't have to come back and amend the district facility plan. It will already be on there and any monies could be applied toward that project and we wouldn't have to come back through this process anymore. I understand. Thank you. That's good. I also have a question um, in terms of the overall a future plan for the facilities. When we first started looking at the plan up at the top where it says preschool, K through five, six through eight. Um, and I, I wasn't sure if this was the appropriate meeting to ask about this, but we had previously had a preschool standalone building and now the preschool is housed in each of the elementary schools. And I wasn't sure if that was gonna be the continuing ongoing plan or if that's where we would put that in the long range plan if we were gonna have um, a standalone preschool center. We probably need to change that to PK through five if you no longer have the standalone center. So that's probably my mistake and I need to correct that. I appreciate you pointing that out. Now, Jeannie, Jeannie, I think what she's saying is on the DFP from four years ago, we had a new preschool center listed as somewhere up near the top of the um, priority two. Okay. So, um, 
Elizabeth, the uh, so the issue with that is going to and and Don and and Jeannie kind of helped me with this. So we could put it on there. The issue is going to be kind of similar to what we dealt with with MCIS four or five years ago, where because we have the capacity in our elementary schools, KDE will not approve us to build an extra facility for a grade level that we currently have capacity for in our current buildings. Okay, so, that makes, I was gonna ask about that because I remember we had talked about those, I, I believe it was the University of Louisville projections for population. And I wasn't sure if that was, if, you know, if we were gonna be talking about that in the future or if we already know that our capacity is fixed. Yeah, so, so when we look at those projections, those projections are in five-year increments. And when KDE approves things, even though we have to look at, um, at capacity projections, their, their main focus is on what our current capacity is. So if you go back to why we had to end up making the decision about MCIS, because MCIS was preventing any of our other projects from getting done or any further um, extensions being done because KDE would have come back and said, you've got space in your other buildings. You have to rearrange your grade levels to fit that space before we'll approve any other projects basically. So if we put a preschool on there right now, um, we could put it on there. I don't, I don't know that there'd be an issue with that, but they would never let us do it until we showed that we didn't have capacity in our current buildings to, to deal with the preschool. And obviously we do. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So should I change this right here to PK through five? Uh, I'm sorry, on the long range, uh, that if you change it to PK five, that would more accurately represent what okay. we currently have. I will be glad to do that. I think that's a mistake and, on my part. <laughs> yeah, and, and and Elizabeth and you and I have talked about this before. We we know the importance of that that preschool program, and it is tough sometimes to not have a dedicated facility for that. Um, so you know we we knew that when we had to um, the old preschool building, we knew we couldn't renovate it because it was the renovation would have costed. Um, more than a certain percentage of a new building and KDE wouldn't approve that. So um, I don't want us to forget about that at all, but at the same time, given our current capacity in the buildings, um, getting that preschool, new preschool approved would be very difficult. Thank you. And I, I'm assuming it would be the similar situation to get an intermediate school. Again, even, you know, I'm looking at the McNabb capacity and it's not, we don't look that it doesn't appear to be that much of a need. So I'm assuming that would be a similar situation. Yeah, I think what would more likely happen, what we could talk about is building on an addition to McNabb. And we, you know, even before, MC, even before, let's back up years before I got here, what is now Northview when it was originally designed was supposed to be the fourth elementary school. At some point that got turned into MCIS after the designs had already been built, uh, had already been, been created. So if you look at what MCIS offered, that true intermediate program, you can do that even in a McNabb setting, but it would require an extra addition being built on. Um, and even before I got here, there were some discussions that had occurred that would potentially look at an extra wing on McNabb that would come out from the uh, back end of the library and come out like into the football practice field, that direction. So we could recreate an MCIS type environment type program, um, but we could even do it, um, you know, like on McNabb campus. Is that something that we should be considering in this plan? Because I mean, it was a, it was an, an incredibly successful program. That's just why I was asking for the, that. What you're talking about that five six kind of intermediate program in McNabb? Yeah. So again, um, we get into the kind of the the logistics issue of the capacity that we have, and even though looking at the the McNabb capacity, um, we're a little bit over it. 
remember capacity is not truly the number of kids you can fit into a, a facility. It, it has to go with how those facilities currently being used. So our capacity right now is, is okay. Um, it's something I think, you know, we could look at in the future, but I don't know based on our current capacity right now, if it's, if it's there, but you know, you, again, I'm not a, um, I'm just kind of in a guidance role on the LPC at this point. I'm not a, a voting member. So just trying to provide with as much information as I can. And that makes sense. I appreciate that. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding it correctly. Thank you. If there's no other comments, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Martin and uh, let him conclude the meeting then. Well, thank you, Jeannie. You did a fantastic job of uh, explaining the current situation uh, there at, uh, at Montgomery County. And I really appreciate uh, the detail uh, that was done uh, in, in this in this report. So we really appreciate this. Um, just like to remind the entire committee that um, that we never know what the future will look like and what happens if if uh, the University of Louisville study is sped up, uh, for lack of a better term, and and Montgomery County starts growing incrementally uh, a lot sooner than uh, than what they project. We can always come back and make amendments to the plan. Uh, there's a few steps that we can uh, undertake uh, to maybe address some of the issues that we've been speaking of tonight. Um, so we always have that in our back pocket uh, if the need is there. Uh, but uh, Dr. Thompson was right. KDE will look at your current status. Uh, there's a lot of districts out there that think they're going to get bigger and uh, very few of them in reality do get bigger at this point. Uh, most districts in Kentucky, as, as you saw with the, with the presentation from, from Dr. Tarvin, uh, are losing enrollment figures uh, uh, rather than gaining. So they cannot project out in the future five to 10 years and allow you uh, as a district to start constructing uh, buildings using restricted funds with, without a lot of data to back that up. So I understand that, you know, it's protecting the public dollar. Uh, however, uh, if situation comes in Montgomery County where you need space, uh, we can always come back and either put a uh, preschool on the plan, which would free up space for uh, every other elementary school in the district, or we could uh, put an intermediate school on the plan, which are also free up uh, space in the other elementary schools. We can always do something like that. It, just because it's a four-year plan doesn't mean that it has to be set in stone. This is our best guess estimate about what we think our facility needs are for, for the next four years. So uh, as Jeannie said, uh, we would like for you to uh, take this back uh, this, uh, for the school-based people on the committee. Uh, you're free to discuss this plan with people that you work with on an everyday basis. Uh, there may be an item or two that we have failed to put on there that is important. Um, if we do have those situations, uh, it would probably be good if you could uh, let Dr. Thompson know. And, and uh, obviously he knows the background of the district much better than I. And then he could get with, with Jeannie and, and see if that's a viable item to, to put on, on the plan. I would like to have uh, sort of a, a finished draft for lack of a better term uh, at our next meeting uh, with, with all the, uh, the needs listed so we can uh, have somewhat of a straw vote. It won't be an official vote, but if we are in, in agreement that, yeah, this is a pretty good plan, what it looks like, I think this is the plan we would have liked for KDE to consider, then we'll have a uh, thumbs up, thumbs down type thing. And we will send that plan to KDE for their editing. Um, and when they edit, they sometimes they disallow some spending with restricted funding and make you put a particular item to, or two in category five 
that, that was in category two or something of that nature, um, they may find an item that doesn't qualify for restrictive funding because it's too new or, or something of that nature that sometimes there'll be some minor edits, but they will clean that up and send it back to us. So here's what I would like to do. I would like to have the next meeting on February the 11th, which is two weeks from tonight. And we'll have a public forum at the conclusion of our meeting again. Uh, that will be our second public forum. We're going to advertise an amount sterling advocate. Um, and that will come out next week. So we will have the meeting on the 11th. Um, and Dr. Thompson, the public forum cannot start before 530. So what time would you like to start the regular meeting to look at the, the cleanup uh, DFP? How much time do you think would mean you think an, an hour or less is fine for that? Um, you know, if if everyone gets any concern to you and we get it to Jeannie in a timely manner, um, you know, I, I don't anticipate it to be an hour and a half between, you know, one starting at 4, 1, 5, 30, like we, we normally do that. Uh, we could go at 4.30 with a regular meeting or 4.45 or, or something of that nature. Why don't we look at 4.30? Yeah. So everyone, if you would, put on your calendar 4.30 on February 11th for our next regular meeting. That'll be uh, our fourth meeting. And then at the conclusion at 5.30, we'll have our second public forum. Now, if we get to 5.30 and we're still not finished uh, with our current meeting or the regular meeting, we will just pause that meeting and take a, take a recess, go on and have the public forum because uh, we don't want those people to wait. And then we'll come back to our regular meeting and, 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 uh, and take that up after that, but I don't, I don't anticipate that. So that will be uh, the immediate thing is uh, February 11th, 4.30. Uh, if we can come to an agreement at the end of that meeting, um, unofficial agreement, then we'll send it to KDE. I'm not sure how long they will have it. Jeannie, how long they, uh, they usually keep it now? It, it, sometimes it's lengthy, sometimes it's not. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of depends, but I've had one up there a couple of weeks and I've had one up there about seven months. So it, it's, yeah, I, understand. I can't really tell you. <laughs> I told you know. it's not the seven month one. Because uh, <laughs> we would like for our Dr. Thompson to get it on the board agenda for the March meeting. Yes. Uh, if, if that is possible with the board, but because if, if the, if the, um, now what our schedule is and meet, meet February the 11th, um, sort of give the thumbs up or thumbs down to our plan, send it to KDE. Once they edit it, we'll have to come back for another meeting. There'll be an official vote after mm -hmm. we look at the KDE edits. Now, after that official vote, which hopefully will be toward the end of February, that's optimistic, but hopefully yes. it is. <laughs> uh, then if we vote that plan in, we're going to send it to the local board of education for, for their consideration. Now, if your local board uh, approves that, then your role in this process is finished. Uh, we will still have to have another public hearing, which is like two weeks after the board meeting. Um, our goal is uh, we have to, we need to be finished by the first week of April. Uh, we need to get that plan approved to KDE so they can get that on the state board agenda in June so that that that's the month that they use for the general assembly to decide how much unmet need money are going out to the district. So we're going to try to put it on the fast track as much as we can. I will work with, uh, with Mr. Gilbert at KDE and I know Jeannie will too, uh, I try to get it, uh, through there with his edits as quickly as possible so we can come back as a group and, and look at the, the edited plan by KDE. So, Dr. Thompson, do you have anything to add at this point? Anybody else? Anything for the good of the group? Well, again, Jeannie, fantastic job. Uh, I really so appreciate much. the depth that you went. Um, <laughs> uh, the depth that I saw tonight was, was, uh, was 
better than than mm -hmm. almost every district that I've worked with in the past. So congratulations on that, thank and, uh, and and thank you for your hard work. So uh, <laughs> if everybody would um, uh, would put that on your calendar, to February the eleventh at four thirty, um, we can we can have our next meeting there. So uh, Chairman Preston, may, uh, motion to adjourn. Hey, can I get a can I get a motion from somebody to adjourn the meeting? So moved. A second that was Mr. Robertson. Can I get a second? Who was that? John Morton. John Morton. And I assume everybody votes yes, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much, and I'll see you on the eleventh. Matt, do you have something to say? Or just waving. Just waving. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye.